Good day, it's Colin from Jeepin.net. Today I want to give you guys a walk around our Project LJ Rubicon. Um, I just took it off road. I figured today might be a good day to kind of show you guys around. It's going to be an exterior, won't go into the interior. But just to give you some of the general before I take the camera to the tripod and show you around. This is a 2005 LJ Rubicon. Uh, it's got almost 300,000 uh, kilometers on it. Um, I think that's somewhere equivalent to 200 uh, miles. I'll, I'll tell you the differences. Anyway, I'm going to take out the tripod and kind of give you a walk around, give you guys a bit more detail as to what's going on here. So starting at the axles, uh, we have the factory uh, Dana 44s front and rear. Uh, we've put 48 gears in them, uh, G2 gears, uh, and the lockers are working fairly well. I have rerouted the locker pumps underneath the hood into separate switches, so I bypass all the computer for all the operations, so I can actually run the lockers um, you know, in, in any mode, which is nice and also makes troubleshooting a lot more easier. Um, in the front, uh, we do have Yukon Chromoly shafts. Uh, the, back is, the back is still factory for right now, but I do plan on upgrading those two Chromoly shafts in, in the future. For steering, uh, we're actually using the uh, Grand Cherokee uh, uh, steering arm. Though I'm looking at it right now, it looks like it might be a little bent uh, right in the middle there. It looks to be a bent on that end, but not a bent on that end. That was probably some damage from yesterday. Um, and we're actually using a factory uh, drag link. For track bar, we're actually using a Rubicon, uh, sorry, we're actually using a Rough Country uh, forged uh, adjustable front track bar. Uh, I have a separate video coming up on that one. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it pretty much for drive, train, and steering. Uh, we're still using all factory steering uh, for the most part, uh, other than, than that uh, Grand Cherokee uh, drag link. For suspension, we're running actually uh, the zone three inch coils with a one and a half inch spacer up front um, and we are running uh, Rancho 5000 X uh, shocks. Sorry, now there's a train going in the back. Uh, we do have uh, Cordy Anti-Rock anti sway bar in the front, a factory sway bar in the rear. For tires, uh, we just recently bought these. These are the General Grabber X3s in a 35 by 12 and a half by 15s. I actually really like these so far. Uh, you do got to air down fairly low. I'm picking them down to about between 6 and 8. Uh, first time I was out, I ran them at a 12, and that was definitely uh, too high. Uh, they just didn't deform very well. We are running Rough Country Control Arms. Uh, I bought those mostly because I, I bought them on a going out of sale business, actually, from a shop. Um, they were very economical for me to buy them. Um, for a fraction of the price I could have bought most other things. I don't put a lot of kilometers on this vehicle, so I actually I think they're a good value for me. They're fully adjustable, all, all eight links. Um, and yeah, I, I, so, for, so far for me, they've been working out pretty well. More on drivetrain, I'm actually running a Tom Woods drive shaft in the rear. Uh, you can see this is an LJ, so it's a pretty long one. Uh, I know that those slip spline looks like I have a lot exposed. Uh, when I talked to them, they said it's actually good. The reason I have so much exposed is I actually had to replace my rear yoke. Uh, and when I did that, that yoke was actually slightly shorter, uh, and that actually lost me about an inch and a half uh, there. So I actually do plan on getting a new yoke. Uh, in the front, I'm actually running a Oliver, I think it's Oliver drivetrain uh, drive shaft. Um, just here in Canada, that was the most economical for me to buy. Uh, and as you can see, it was, I had an issue yesterday where it was actually rubbing the exhaust in here, which was some problems. And yeah, that should pretty much do it for drivetrain underneath here. For um, more about engine, so I'm actually running a Thrush uh, fully welded muffler. I actually really quite like this. Um, this vehicle came with kind of a hacked up exhaust when I bought it. Uh, so I've had to kind of, as you can see, add some adapters to it to get it in place. The catalytic, catalytic converter was removed from this from uh, when I bought it. So I've had to put in some additional piping to make that all work. But other than that, the engine is actually pretty much 100% stock, even though it has so many kilometers on it. Uh, no aftermarket parts on that engine right now and probably won't be doing anything to it. For skid plates, uh, we actually have some front control arm skid plates on order, but they actually aren't here yet. Would have been useful yesterday. We're running the TerraFlex oil pan skid. I've run this a couple of vehicles. I really, really like it. Uh, I do have an oil leak of some sort right now. I think it's actually a, a few oil leaks. Um, and I'm actually running the Rough Country um, high clearance skid. You don't see a lot of people running this. Um, I really don't understand why a lot of people don't run this. Uh, you know, it is just metal. Uh, it fits on perfectly. It gives quite a bit of, it gives it the same clearance as all the other ones. It has really good cutouts for all the items. Uh, honestly, the only thing I don't like about it is the big rough country cutout they put right here. But as you can see, I use it. Uh, it's been banged up quite a few times. 
Uh, it uses the factory mount still, but it gives you a little adapter plate. Um, I actually really, really quite like this. I think my only con with it is it only comes with two bolts here, rather than you you'd normally have a third one right here. Actually, it looks like my bolt's a little loose right now after wheeling yesterday, so I gotta do some checking on that. In the rear of the G for skid plates, we have our savvy uh, gas tank skid. This installed this this past week. You can see it got used pretty good this past week. No actual dents, couple of scrapes, which would be expected, but it was definitely nice having that an inch higher. And for rear differential skid, we had the Poison Spider uh, bomb proof uh, cover there. Uh, I've really liked that so far. You can see I used it quite a bit yesterday. Uh, some pretty rocky, gnarly trails we were on yesterday. In front, I'm actually just running a, uh, I think that's a, no, it's not a Warren. I've run the ran, I've ran the Warren differential cover a couple times in the past. It's a half skid cover. I really like it. It doesn't interfere with the steering whatsoever. Uh, but this is actually just a generic one that I found actually on Amazon. Uh, and as I mentioned there, uh, I have some front control arm skids on the way. They just weren't here for the run I ran on yesterday. Too bad because I could have used them as you can see. Um, yeah, it does look like that front bar is bent. That's never good. So now for the exterior of the vehicle, never done the drivetrain underneath. Uh, it's still fairly factory uh, around it, so let's just start in the front. Um, I'm just going with some generic headlights that I bought. I really don't like them at all. It casts a very horrible light, very, very horrible patterns. Highly regret buying those ones. Um, and for winch, this is actually a friend of mine's winch. Uh, I want to uh, actually get a Warren 8274 probably. Uh, at some point, I've had them in the past. I really like them. Uh, but this winch is just tiny, tiny over until then. Uh, I'll get rope and all that. And factory bumper, I'm still rocking. We have some funny legal requirements in my area. Uh, some people are getting away with the narrower bear, narrow, narrow, some people are getting away with the more narrow bumpers, but uh, I'm just keeping it safer right now, running this. I think this actually does well for me right now. The biggest um, risk, obviously, is bending this. I may actually reinforce it a little bit, uh, just so I can keep running it a little bit longer. I see we sustained a little bit of trail damage yesterday. Uh, well, I was mentioning actually popped oh, off the root right into a tree, so I got a little dent in the hood there and the fender got pushed in. Which is actually fine because that goes with, with some upgrades I want to do in the future. Uh, Ten also got snapped on another trail, so I'm actually running the shorty. I, I barely listened to the radio, uh, so that's been fine with me. For a top, we actually have the best top uh, frameless. Uh, I actually pretty much like this. There's a couple of things I don't like about it, uh, and it has to do with the fact that when you remove the rear window, the side windows have to come out as well. Um, as you can see, I put it in a bunch of trees yesterday, pretty narrow trail. Um, also, when I damaged that fender up front, um, this happened. So, no damage at the top. That's all tree sap. And that is going to be a real pain to get out of this top. It's going to be really quite annoying. Still running all the factory uh, fenders and flares and all that. The front flares, I should mention, were trimmed up. Um, most people don't rec notice it, but they have been trimmed up a little bit to avoid any rubbing. So, at full flex, these tires do not rub with this setup. Um, I do have a little bit of bump stops in place, as you should, uh, to, to stop any rubbing from happening. Uh, we are walking, rocking the worn uh, rocker guards. Uh, again, I've ran these in the past and really, really like them. They don't help you get into the Jeep at all, but they have a rounded edge on them, which kind of helps you slide off of objects. It's not going to help your body panels at all. Uh, you know, arguably, if I'd had a bit more bigger uh, rockers, I maybe would not have gotten that dent. But I also find these rockers have gotten me around obstacles where other rockers may not have. Um, I actually find these rockers a really nice option. Not many people run them. In back, we're rocking a full-size spare. Uh, and we have the Poison Spider, uh, kind of one of their smaller versions. I think it's their BFH, maybe, uh, bumper. Uh, I like this one. It's very small. Uh, I would have liked to have had have a receiver, uh, but uh, in my case, it didn't make sense. Um, the only thing I don't like about this, and I kind of wish it did have, I kind of wish it came out a little further here. Uh, that would help out on some, on some items, but for right now, that's going to work out okay. We're also rocking some Poison Spider Corners. Uh, I really like these. They are really quite cheap, um, and I've come onto them hard sometimes. So, uh, running an LJ, uh, you will end up hitting the corners, uh, and they've been working out really good for me so far. Um, we also had the Moride uh, tire carrier. Uh, this is a really nice uh, tire carrier. So it uh, attaches to your to your factory tailgate, so it opens and closes with your tailgate. I find it works extremely well. I'm also rocking one YJ aft door. Uh, um, I do have plans to put the other one in. Uh, that's going in pretty soon. Yeah, so this is a quick overview 
look at the Jeep. I'm not going into any of the interior or the electronics. You see that in the CPU radio right here. Um, so yeah, I think I covered off most items. Um, a couple things I do want to do with this Jeep. Uh, steer needs a bit of an upgrade. Uh, I saw I might have bent something there in the front. Um, but I'm also thinking about maybe doing hydraulic assist. Um, I am struggling a little bit to keep up with these tires and all that. I think it's just worn out. Uh, it needs to do steering box probably anyway. So it might make sense to do that in the future. I do want to get rear chromoly shafts. Uh, I do want to upgrade my electrical a little bit. Uh, right now, um, kind of using my own homebrew electronic system, I would like to kind of build something a little bit more stout and easier to use. Um, I would like to highline these fenders. Uh, you saw a little bit of damage on this uh, other side. These are actually capped over some, some, some rust that's showing on these, fold, on these fenders. Um, and I also need to fix up some, some older rust issues. Uh, this windshield's rusted out. Rear tailgate needs to be replaced. So a lot of those cosmetic items need to be done as well. But the Jeep is ready to, ready to run, run on the trails. Uh, it needs a little bit of maintenance here and there. It's got a really high kilometers engine. So I'm not sure what my long-term approach there is. Um, you know, the axles are completely good. The transfer case still needs to be rebuilt probably at some point. Uh, but it drives really well on the road. The engine is a little noisy. I am getting concerned about it. Um, but no, all in all, I really do like this, like this Jeep. Happy to answer any questions about any of the products. Uh, or happy to hear any recommendations that you guys might think I should do this Jeep. I would love to hear that. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this update video.